Okay, now here we go. We're live. Uh, welcome to the APM podcast. You're watching Urban Pundits. My name is Yuvraj and uh, Adi. Welcome, welcome to the show. Jai Shri Ram. Jai, thank you. Jai Shri Ram. Yeah, we just got you. Just got you here. So, how is the weather? Weather is cold today. It's almost mm. uh, from Indian perspective. It's only two degrees Celsius. Oh, we are relatively still colder, right? So I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, Vasant Panchami ke baad thoda weather theek ho jata hai. So uh, the weather is actually a little better here. You see, we have sunny days coming on now. No, there are sunny sunny days, but the early morning is uh, cold. It's six thirty one for me in the morning, so it is cold. Absolutely, got to be, got to be. Well. Um, you know, Adi, so this topic that I have chosen really, I mean, I, I'm glad that you really like um, to talk on. Um, it's sort of, uh, you know, given me nightmares as to really understand what is going on. You know, you live far across and, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, you and I are on the same page. So let me just update you what happened like about a week back. Um, so it starts from a small school in Karnataka and four or five or six children who had to hijab ke liye kiya gaya tha. and then all of a sudden you see there are hundreds and hundreds uh, all together on the roads uh, catching up like a wildfire already in some major cities. I've seen that on Shaheen Bagh already. I've seen that in Kolkata already. Okay, uh, Woke Brigade uh, also the Islamists and uh, of course Congress ka haath to obviously rahega. So Congress is also working, you know, over time and uh, glorifying uh, hijab and uh, and uh, crying out like minority oppression by the fascist government, you see, again. So uh, I just want to understand first off from you, Adi, you know, does school or any institution have a right to enforce uh, its uniform inside the campus? So I would like to pick on you on the, not pick on you, pick up your word that you used, uh, fascist. Yeah. Uh, very few people understand the meaning of fascist. Now search on the Oxford Dictionary or anywhere else. It is a government which is out there, majoritarianism, which is where the people take one view only and force you mm -hmm. down. India mm -hmm. is in no way a fascist society or a fascist government. So the most of the uneducated people in the U.S. call the U.S. government of uh, earlier president as a fascist government. So they are throwing words without understanding the meaning. The most fascist governments in the world are the Islamic nations because they don't allow any other person to rule. Uh, in my last book, Gold, Glory and God, I covered that in much detail there. That fascism doesn't apply to India because mm. the governments have actually worked against the majority of the people. So, uh, you know, and, and uh, you, you mentioned Congress and other parties. You know, You're right. Uh, let me let me say something in between. Since you since you chose to pick this up, abhi 10-15 minute pehle ki baat hai. I was actually reading some comments on my own Facebook. So I had posted something uh, on the achievements in 50 years of Rahul Gandhi and Sachin Tendulkar. Wo ek hafte pehle ki baat hai. Mm. And uh, then it's on my timeline. And then a few friends of mine they start commenting on why am I supporting uh, Sachin Tendulkar and not uh, Rahul Gandhi. I'm like. What are his achievements in in first place? And then you know the you know the conversation continued for some time, and then um, I get to be blamed um, as a supporter of a fascist government. And I'm like, bro, do you know what fascism really means? If this was a fascist government, I think dissenters are the ones who are shot first in cold blood, aren't they? Um, the only <laughs> Um, the only reason you survive and you're still able to talk on that in social media, coming down to my timeline and talk about it, well, it does prove it's not fascist anymore. Exactly. I mean, the, the people have to understand just blaming or abusing Hindus 
by using words like fascist actually fall on them. And I'm so shocked that no Hindu is questioning that please define fascism or look in the history of what is called fascist. Uh, in, in Sanatan Dharma, that will be called a dharmic. Uh, adharmic. So it is against the religion of Hindus to be fascist. Mm-hmm. So the karma principle is based on anti-fascism because we reward. So it's a, uh, you know, the, the, the whole, the whole commentary on fascism on India doesn't hold ground by any Western university or because the Islamic nations have no uh, schools, no think tanks. So they have to rely on Western researches to prove their worth. And I accuse them of ingratitude because they come to the US and they come to any other country they go as refugees. They use the American system. They use Indian system. See, no Muslim has freedom in their own countries. Believe me, write it down. Look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is actually turning towards India because they know that their religion has made them poor. And so it's a strong word, but it is a fact. Uh, so fascism applies to them, not to us. True. So either I they mean, don't understand English or they have a problem in concepts. using somebody else's words to define their own identity. Yeah, that, that could be it. That could be it. That could also be coming out out of total ignorance. You see, just if you don't really know what fascism is, if you don't really know what... Uh, you know, a lot of other words they keep coining in India, like marital rape and stuff like that, right? Of course, I don't, I don't disagree that you know things like that happen. But if you don't use them, use them in the right context, I, you know, you're totally making no sense out of it. Uh, you're regularizing, normalizing these words like fascism. You know, it's crazy. See, at it's the crazy. drop of the head, they say you're racist, you're fascist. Mm. You are like they start abusing without. There is no like you can't talk to them. Mm. They're so yeah. like uh, it's it's uh, sometimes you know talking to a wall. It's like talking to a wall because they already made up their mind, and they only got two words: fascism and racism. So they keep dropping. Mm. India also now they are uh, maybe it's going to come now through Rahul Gandhi to India. Uh, casteism is equal to racism. Now that guy is so dumb. You know you have to ask him. Where does the, which language is the word caste in, and which language of the world is race in? Both are English, both are Latin origin. There mm-hmm. is no equivalence in Sanatan Dharma in Sanskrit. In Hindi, the word is Varna, which has no connection with race or caste, and the second word is Jati, which is human species, is an anthropological construct, and Yoni. So there is no superiority based on your yoni or jati or varna. Varna means uh, alphabet, literally. So yep. the whole the whole uh, shaming of Hindu dharma or Sanatan dharma by using such strong words actually falls on them. And and through your show, I can question them. Do you actually understand what you talk? And the whole hijab controversy. It's a it's a. You know, I think it's a, it's not a very intelligent controversy at all. Okay. Yeah, it's so it'll be interesting to see how you see it from there, you know, because what, let me just put my perspective here uh, about uh, the time when it really started, Adi. You know, I was like, uh, hmm, the timing is quite interesting. You see, there may be some things of a uh, toolkit 3.0 coming into picture or something. And it, seems to be materializing it seems to be showing up on the roads you know uh, ek, ek, um, there is a university called Allah University um, in uh, in Kolkata Waha pe, uh, Shaheen Bagh type ka protest and I do see Shaheen Bagh happening here also uh, I don't want to get into the nuances of how uh, liberalizing um, you know a hijab or burqa could be I don't want to get into the debate of you know if it is religious or not I just want to understand if an institution has a, a right to exercise. I mean, is this 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 thing um, you know under institutional um, framework to you know have some sort of a uniform inside its campus, or it doesn't have a right to do that? No, we need to ask. That's them. that's what. 
that's that's yeah. the debate we need to ask them see they're very clever so if you ask them okay you follow an arabic mindset and you want to follow arabic customs in india does arabia allow hindu customs in arab do they allow open temple worship and without uh, janmapatri no child is born janmapatri everybody has to have everyone goes for tuesday no meat in the country do you follow that no so it's a hypocrisy if you're bringing arab mindset into india then you we need to we need to ask for the same rights i know the the international order is the order of reciprocity so by un charters it is advisable that if two member nations can have reciprocal policies so if they don't allow hindu dharma in their country and you are speaking on their behalf then we cannot allow that mindset in this country also so like that reciprocal reciprocity has to be there now you mentioned about this controversy you know for thousands of years hindus and muslims have been living together you know it didn't matter to us whether somebody is putting a hijab or not now with this controversy what they have done is they have made hijab visible as someone something different like coming from the us when i come to india i see so many hijabs i'm sometimes shocked and in the us nobody puts it no muslim women want to cover themselves in black uh, garbage bag so all the muslim women they want to be open out and they, they reject it most of the arabic countries rejected look at palestine where they put hijab no where they put hijab and look at palestine look at uh, lebanon look, look at syria look at any of those countries only in india is this controversy there <coughs> including pakistan mm-hmm. most of the women over there they want to throw away hijab most of the iranian ladies they had a revolt for against the hijab and out of maybe you can say uh, 80 million uh, 80 million muslim women now you can't force them into a black gay bag just with two eyes to peek in fact most of them are revolting against this thought itself so we need to talk about the if if any feminist is watching this show they need to ask where are the women rights and what are the women rights why they have to be forced tied down to a book which is mm-hmm. rejected i mean if if they follow it literally then saudi arabia will again go back to the stone age i mean we don't believe in stone age but uh, what sure, are the western sure. channel stone ages they be- believe there they will go there so adi they... since you mentioned feminists you know i just wanted to bring this thing up it's it's uh, the paradox that they live in it's pretty funny so um if i'm a feminist i would probably stand with those women who are um you know revolting against burqa in afghanistan but i would support the same cause in india like what malala is doing so i am that feminist um you see what i'm saying it's the du- it's just the double standards look at look at what happened to malala you That's know what i'm saying she now she she was shot by the taliban who wanted the uh, hijab and now she has she was shot because she was going she was shot because a uh, taliban didn't want a school to didn't want a girl to go to school right there was there was a education factor there also adi yeah i mean uh now in bangalore such a cosmopolitan city i mean there is no gratefulness in those communities that you are living in the it silicon valley hub of india they are rich because of the it wealth of india and they, that's why they're making money they're more secure than any other country including pakistan or any other country india has not seen the kind of racist attacks which other countries have seen and and in france the hijab is banned burqa is banned in france in many mm-hmm. other countries of europe austria now gradually these bans are coming down including poland absolutely now they they will not understand that how much freedom they're enjoying in this country in india you know the and and that's where it shocks me the level of ingratitude it's not hate is ingratitude is what are you hating you're hating yourself okay you want to put on the black bags okay put it on every day every minute you put it on 
but don't be hypocritical that you want to put it on just to tease the Hindu girls. You know, they, what they actually want to say to Hindus, I, I tell you one thing. They want to tell Hindus that you are low class women. We are high class women. Our bodies are covered. And and there is a, if you go to UAE and and then you'll, you under the hijab, they wear all kinds of makeups and whatever they want to do. The, the, the point is hypocrisy just to tease a non-Muslim or to show them that you're lower. Actually, they're saying that we are, look at us, we are in the black bag and you are free. So like mm -hmm. willingly putting shackles on yourself. Is it, is it real? Is it sensible? We don't know. I mean, I mean, for a commonsensical person like me, I mean, if you, we put on the masks on, we had breathing problems. And now if you, somebody puts on this kind of covering on their face, it's, it's a health hazard for them. It's a problem. It's like a, you don't know. And, and there is a big security issue also that uh, so you don't sure. know who is walking in. So definitely if they want to do it, they should do it, but not in schools where Hindus are also students. So they should do in your own, in their own country, in their own society. Maybe they all should get out of the university colleges and go to madrasas. That is the best way to do it. That in a religious sure. school, follow your religious customs. But where Hindus are studying, I mean, we need security. We don't know who is coming. A man is coming in the burqa. We don't know. So I Absolutely. think it's, uh, the entire controversy is uh, illogical to my mind. And if it is being done by politicians or the rabid Islamic group, they need to know that the hijab is being thrown out by the Islamic nations, including Saudi Arabia and UAE. UAE is rich because they are not implementing all parts of Islam. The day they start doing it, Euro Dubai will book, become poorer than Ghana or Burkina Faso or Fiji. It will be a very poor country. So they need to understand, they need to choose. They're not, they don't, they're not teasing Hindus, they're making fun of themselves actually. Hmm. No, you were actually right before, Adi, I think, you know, uh, with the kind of uh, banners which is out in Indoor that I was seeing on Twitter today. Um, and I don't want to bring these things up because, you know, what's the fun then? So, usne kuch aisa hai ki jo kimti cheeze hoti hai, usko chupa ke rakha jata hai, right? And so, what you're trying to really imply that Hindu girls or Sikh girls or Christian girls or whoever is choosing not to wear burqa, they're not precious. So, it's it's damn outright race, racist and, you know, the superiority um, complex. This is crazy on a whole different level. Yeah, the, the word, see, the thing is, the if you look at, I don't know much about Quran and I'll be very honest with you. I never studied. But uh, but I can tell you illogical thing. I have a serious objection to the word kafir. Uh, because the kafir mm. creates racism, creates terror. That word itself is the origin of terror. That word is the origin of racism against Hindu. It's a real racist thought. Like, uh, and mm. also very communal thought, the word kafir. So I was, I think I, I was the first one to write on kafir phobia because they train their children to hate or stay away from kafir. It's against the national integration in any society, any country. And uh, because you're trying to train a population that you are supremacist, you're superior because you follow this faith and they should, you should not mix with any other person. So what happens is that child, when they grow up, they are practically socially unusable or, or, or socially they are like, uh, you can say pariah because they are, they cannot uh, integrate with anybody else because they already have the mind that uh, Hindus are, you know, like if you look at the Hindi Arab Kosh dictionary, usme meaning hai Hindu ka, kala, badda, chor, makkar, nalayak, even today. And so okay. when you talk to about kafirs like this and you're living in a land where majority are kafir, who makes who becomes a kafir then? You yourself, not sure. others. So outcast. So the, the English word outcast is again a is a colonial mindset where the nobility were considered better than the gentiles. Anyway, we'll do a different discussion on that. But anyway, yep. so the the, yep. the point is uh, 
it's a very illogical ask and and you are actually training your children or women that uh, that they need to be stay away out of fear this is called kafir phobia they're scared of kafirs and, sure. and and ask them in pakistan are you more secure no muslim is secure mm. in pakistan in fact muslims are secure in only two countries in the entire middle east one is uae second is israel only mm. two countries just all the countries they have or oman probably yes but uh, but generally address all other countries are uh, the problems everywhere sure sure yeah radhi let's talk about india a bit huh um so we at the end of the day everybody boils down to this ki yaar hame bahar ke country se kya lena dena ki saudi mein kya ho raha hai and you know uh, uh vatican mein kya ho raha hai we should be concerned about ourselves but again that's a very uh sort of uh, stance which is uh, weird because at the same time you're also countering the same thing on other platforms your own statements we uh, hear a lot of talks about article 25 uh, ki sabko apna religious uh, propagation ka and uh, um, practice ka adhikar hai so i understand ki aapko practice ka adhikar hai but aapka religion aapke naak tak hona chahiye isn't that the case i mean why do you really have to sh- carry that religion all the way to the institutions that's that's the point right i had a, i had a friend from kurg and i don't know if you know about this adi but uh, uh, kurgis are one of those minority people jinko abhi bhi uh, weapon rakhne ka adhikar hai so they can keep weapons they all actually all of them actually have uh, multiple guns in their houses so uh, with that right they can actually carry one firearm to the school but do they they don't right there is there is a need for a uniformity in the institution that is why it's called uniform why is this ruckus against uniform see uh, and there is another article of the indian constitution i cannot quote it right now i don't remember it's called something related to law and order so if your religious practice create disturbance for others then that should sure. not be allowed then that law takes precedence so Absolutely. this hijab controversy is definitely a law and order issue because it is like to tease hindus this is not just to practice the religion in fact uh, i was told by one of the my muslim students actually mm. uh, she was telling me that to make fun of other religions is itself un islamic and whatever their ancestors did to kill hindus and and she is from persia uh, but now she has left islam publicly and mm-hmm. she is coming back to zoroastrianism or hinduism which is connected and she says that now we feel complete because we are connected to the roots so the what happened by the arabic invaders to their country was pathetic now coming to your question uh, right now in this the indian constitution has several provisions on on protecting their law and order respect and and it is very illogical or see the in india the problem is the politicians destroy the law enforcement for their petty gains like the state law machinery they regularly use unrest civil unrest to gain credibility or to be in power so m- most of the indian politicians are uneducated they come from backgrounds which are fairly questionable to uh, i'm saying most because that is a true look at bengal look at kerala look at any other place they don't allow the state machinery to perform most of them so what happens is the law enforcement becomes a weak factor and everything is used in the elections so the 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 point is the indian politicians themselves you see if the indian politician was strong and strict then every state in india will be as rich as any state of united states because the politicians are the ones who make the systems weaker in india and because of them the corruption gets into judiciary because they force people they use uh, and because and they purposely keep the police weak in india purposely see america is rich because the law enforcement is there strong so people like me and people like even though we keep lot of guns and everything but people like me 
we are feel protected because we we are not trained to fight with anyone you see what mm. i'm saying we are not trained to fight with anyone we, our field is different if there is no law enforcement we can depend on then we cannot live similarly people common person in india see why uh, you know i uh, i'm so impressed by yogi adityanath ji's performance because there is no rights there are no rights people are secure people are happy now now in bangalore and karnataka especially the local politicians they are the ones who are responsible for it, for all the kinds of police weakness see the police in india needs to be taken away from under the hands of state politicians they are very corrupt people and including the and and they they need to politicians need to fear that if they are caught in a bad police they will be jailed in 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 any other countries successful democracy even in europe or in us the police have the right to stop people if they are not using the official vehicles so they can stop them and they can challenge them they can do whatever they want to do find them for traffic problems or anything else so the the law and order issue has been which is a state subject in india has been weak this is a purely law enforcement issue they should have immediately come in and say and told the politicians who are spreading it that you are going to create civil unrest that's going to hurt the economy and and that's why they should act on it but the the whole politician and uh, the political privilege and the corruption in all these states most of these states where these are happening where the state politicians are involved whether it's a bengal whether it's a karnataka kerala all these places state politicians are involved it has no connection with the actual policing over there Yes, I cannot see you now. Can you see me? Hello. Yes. Can you see me? Hear me now? It's better. Yes. I was talking a bit in between. Yes. Right. All right. <laughs> That happens sometimes, you know. Just threw me out. Didn't like my face. Didn't like my sound. Um. So yeah, Adi, you where? I didn't actually hear you. So where were you exactly at? So I was concluding. I was saying that the the hmm. political interference in the state law enforcement is the root cause of problem. And I think in most of the states yes. of India, if the state government doesn't allow freedom of police and police enforcement, see the in all the riots happen in these states. where the police is kept in the bar- barracks or asked to stay away and politicians want to handle it so so this is how those states are the called the banana states because there is no systems there are no procedures all the institutions have been side marginalized this is what is happened in bengal what happened in kerala what happened in kashmir these are the three states in india you know i will i will warn people if you go there you will be like you are at the mercy of the local politician actually not the police absolutely that's a big problem no, you're right um, the day absolutely what you're trying to say is uh, you know adi ki uh, state ka monopoly hona chahiye on the violence you know which is obviously not the case in uh, no actually state like ka monopoly India, violence mein nahi hona chahiye but the state's monopoly should be uska monopoly hone chahiye security provide karne ke liye see see the 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 in 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 any democracy citizens have and the law enforcement nobody should interfere in law enforcement mm-hmm. nobody whoever they are they should not interfere in law enforcement so the let the law take its own course Let, let there is a law in india and let them take its own course but when the politicians interfere 
and make the police weak so that they can carry on their divisive work or take law into their hands that's the problem state has monopoly over giving mm. justice not violence going on if you you know if you have crazy people like them aapko shayad pata nahi hoga these colleges there was mob okay in stone pelting um is that is that way of asking thing this is threat outright threat so not only the matter is in the court but the matter is out there on the street as well you see um so government and judiciary this is my personal view again you know government or judiciary aapko nahi that foot pe already chala jata hai when this this goes out uh, you know right there on the streets and at the same time you see urban nexels and woke brigade you know is out there in the social media defending uh hijab and everything also glorifying at the same time i don't understand uh wasi adi i think jo will be uh, connecting soon she was just texting me she got she got hospitalized that's what she said oh I hope she is all right. I hope she is all right. She may be joining in. So I wanted to really ask this: Ki yar, chalo, ठीक है. आपको नहीं पसंद, नहीं पसंद. But you know, you really want to force your uniform down there in the campus. And आप एक जगह तो ये बोल रहे हो कि मेरा education के ऊपर rights ज़्यादा हैं. And then banners आप ये चिपका रहे हो कि you know. burqa comes first education comes second right uh, they, they they talk about precious things living in uh, you know kept hidden is there i don't sort of really understand i i think you know criminals are supposed to be hidden not precious things uh, also highly classified things you know in the history uh, are pretty evil in nature which has been hidden you see um, burqa freedom hai liberation hai empowerment hai i also don't see scholars uh scientists or athletes musicians philosophers coming out of that you know burqa empowerment or have you who has burqa Now, really empowered you know we should ask uh, all the bollywood stars to start wearing burqa 24 by 7 you know and especially deepika padukone because <laughs> she supports a lot so she should cover her face in black and that's how she should come out and if burqa is empowerment You know, which sensible man, including an animal, will say to cover them completely so even their eyes, only eyes are visible. Even the dog is going to revolt. And so, when a human being talks like this, the burqa is empowerment. You know, ask to millions of women who fought against burqa all over the world. So it is purely a political gimmick in India, political gimmick, and such low class politics. like on hijab mm. and now what is happening is now people are more and more people are going to work against hijab so they have already created a framework for civil unrest okay and now you're talking about the protest they have and they are talking about the words that you just told me burqa and this thing see if burqa comes first before education then get out of the school just wear burqa and and if you you know see unless you you start talking like this in a, and i am just talking with pure logic and reasoning here i am not even going into culture or anything else you know it doesn't make sense common sense it doesn't make common sense why will a small girl want to be covered from head to toe every girl would like to see colorful clothes why would they cover in black or blue whatever they color they choose why and why there is hypocrisy like uh, you you are so it's a it's a whole the whole thing is something else you know and why women need to be covered why men are not wearing burqa my next question is men should mm. be more controlled so all the men should also wear burqa my my advice to all that community muslim community is ask your fathers to wear burqa 24 by 7 and then it will start making sense okay then it is equality and once they start wearing burqa 24 by 7 men then you come out and you talk to your daughter the father has to set an example so all the malvis of karnataka and bengal and everywhere else should be fully covered in burqa that should be our demand also 
there's a logical demand men and women are equal so let us do it they should hide their beautiful beards behind a black burqa hmm hmm yeah that they won't do right so um the counter from uh, this ovesi so happens to be the rep- one the only representation of muslims in india for some reason this guy uh, is like i wear skull cap in parliament there is no problem but is skull cap or i have also seen a lot of people you know trying to compare it with sardar wearing uh, their turban first um but is that an appropriate analogy you know a skull, skull cap or a or a pug and a burqa i i really don't even see that as a as an appropriate thing analogy you know every woman would like to look beautiful in front of others it's a natural thing yep it's a natural thing that every woman would like to look beautiful why why you're killing the natural propensity by putting this facade on their head and if uh, men like uh, skull cap is okay skull cap is okay we put the luck is both things are fine uh, you know i have no problem people wear baseball caps also i have no problem there too people can wear hats if so it's okay your head is covered so that the bird zone drop something on your head that is fine now i am asking one step further why not ovc wears the burqa and walks around we want him to see in burqa you know we need to ask those kind of questions how foolish is that that you cover your women in burqa and you don't you stay outside of the burqa did you hear at the end of the you know i just want to see the end result or the you know or somebody who came out of this burqa empowerment has maybe bad with history but you are have you seen somebody come this burqa empowerment uh yuvi is my voice coming clear hmm. to you yes yes i can hear you okay okay fine i am having a problem when you speak something is delayed and sometimes the words get lost Can you repeat Are what you said? Uh, did you hear what I asked? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the internet. You can repeat what you said? Asked? Yeah. I want to... I was just telling I'm bad with history, Adi. You know, I may not. I am... I, I may be wrong. But I, I really have uh, no proof. I have not, not seen... uh you know an empowered woman really coming out of this burqa empowerment you see i have not, not seen a scientist or an athlete or uh, you know an astronaut a philosopher or an artist seen anybody coming out of this burqa empowerment some somebody who really changed this. but maybe you know see the most of the most of the see this is such an illogical man created political created problem no intelligent man would like to speak uh, you know the it is like a intelligent person will have problems in commenting on such issues and therefore we, we have to rely on the courts and there is a muslim judge in karnataka high court who commented on it and he put a ban that with there all kinds of people there why to enforce your own religious practices so the The, the whole thing is so illogical that no intelligent man would like to comment on it generally even i am just speaking on this show only on your show because you asked me to speak it is it is doesn't make sense that why would you cover your women in a in completely covered only eyes visible which is like a severe human rights violation of women and the, all the feminists must actually talk against it and if you expect bollywood to talk against it then you are severely mistaken bollywood has become the extension of talibanized mindset you know the you know i would like to take a pot shot at the kapil sharma show and the way he promotes all these people 
and and those people are the ones who actually are engaged in all kinds of activities against india against hindus because their only job is to make money and that's what it comes out very clearly how much payment you get and how much you get how much you make money and so it's all about that in that industry so they would love to participate in such controversies to show hindus down and there is a one uh, and they are openly anti india anti hindus you know that there are many stars over there many I don't stars but i mean foolish people and they are the ones who are promoted in the western media you know there is actress over there swara bhaskar i don't know what she is and who what she does but but like uh, why is she being called to a, an american talk show by the indian american muslim so you all understand so controversy it's political again i said they are destroying themselves with foolish politicians and and what is going to happen is they will get a mass rejection and then they will complain about islamophobia and then they said hey your actions is karma all the way if you do bad to others it is going to happen to you again again i lost you you be i don't see you Okay. Adi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right, perfect. Jia, hi. Jia, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Uh, sorry, I just you know I got hospitalized uh, all of a sudden, but the uh, subject was really crucial, so I decided to come online for this topic. Uh, Thank the- you so much. Thank you so much. So, uh, 
Yeah. Okay, I, I just hope that you're all right and you heal well. Um, I'm going to talk to you later about exactly what happened. I was getting worried about it. We were talking about uh, Burka and for some reason, you know, my system is throwing me out. It's not like in my face or voice or something else going on. Thank you, Adi, for being patient. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Jia, what we were talking about is, uh, you see, ek, uh, cry type ka rahe ki all precious things are kept hidden. Hmm? So you mean to say other Hindu girls, they're not precious. That's the first thing. And I was also coming, I was also talking to Adi about how um, I have really not come across somebody, um, you know, as an empowered woman, uh, mm -hmm. like a scholar or a scientist or a philosopher or a, you know, musician, athlete coming out of this burqa empowerment. Have you? Oh, yeah, th this is not a new movement which they are running. First of all, we have to mm -hmm. check. Uh, whenever we are talking about Arabic movements or Islamic movements, we need to check from where they are coming up. So it's been like six years ago also, like six years back, sorry. Yeah. So there were a few activists from London also. They were volleyball or basketball players. They have started this movement. So that lady uh, is, uh, you know, covered by many of the bands. That is the name also of her. So this is a pre-planned plan. For India, why it has came all of a sudden? You have to, uh, you know, uh, make a mark of like because of Lavanya case. Here we were making you and cry about Lavanya that, uh, you know, how uh, she has got converted, she has got killed and all, right? So for for just putting it at the back foot, they came up with this new kind of drama that you know hijab. Just tell me one thing. First of all, in Quran, I'll tell you the surah number also. In uh, in Quran, it is only mentioned that uh, women shall cover up their uh, you know uh, their internal organ and their breast. That is what written. I'll tell you. I have gone through the surah number and all everything. So this is like you know all all rubbish. Oh, fine. Huh. So this is all rubbish they're doing and they are creating this human cry for like you know this is this is not a right. Of course, like at the time of uh, women liberation at the time of women freedom, women education, they want. Uh, India to become Afghanistan, India to become Syria, India to become something else, which is not going to happen, first of all. And second thing, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the treatment which we are giving is also not correct. If, if suppose, they are so finick, if they are so mad about Islamic rules, why they shall not be, uh, you know, treated under Islamic rule? Why? Sharia is not a choice, right? It shall not be a choice. They shall be ruled under Sharia. Everything, every crime, every rules shall be applicable on the uh, followers followers of the Islam. I'm not saying Muslims or I'm not saying Islam, you know, Islamic scholars because all the Muslims in India are just followers of Islam. You can see even that now also uh, Muhammad's family who are in Jordan, they live a very lavish life and very open life. Like they are not wearing hijabs, they are not, uh, you know, following all those kind of things which these people are actually, you know, uh, posting on the women. But this, these are the converted Muslims across the globe. They are creating this kind of problems just for creating monopoly. Just for creating harassment, just for creating a kind of, you can say, uh, a kind of uh, uh, demographic changes. So, I, I, I believe in something else. I don't think that you know, they should not get it up. I think, of course, in lead of the Muslim female shall allow to enter politics, shall allow to job. If you are so concerned about your rules of Quran, follow them religiously. Follow them completely. Quran is not a joke. Mm. If, if suppose you are so serious about certain things, you know it shall not be a choice that I will I will choose. I'll pick and choose. Okay, my for be I'll do this right. If I'm liking hijab, if I'm creating a movement, sasti publicity, so I will choose hijab publicity and I'll do it. At the same time, if you know somebody is coming and saying, no, Quran me taisa bhi likha hai, like you know that you are not supposed to work, you are not supposed to go out, you are not supposed to go out without mehram. If you know about like you know Saudi Arabia and many of the countries, 
Men are not allowed to go out without a man. Even if that man is of like for, for you know five, six years, seven years, the brother, the there some of the relative or somebody. So in India, first of all, uh, this minority hue and cry they have created. Uh, Abhi me Al Jazeera par rehti. In Al Jazeera, they are like you know they have posted a tagline or like headline that uh, a Muslim women have been oppressed to wear hijab in college. First of all, what is the need of hijab in college? Why we have to discriminate students, right? Why we have to show that you know somebody is Hindu, somebody is Muslim, somebody is Christian. Of course, we are uh, we are uh, you know studying in the missionary schools that I always used to talk about that our our, our study patterns are totally missionary. But at the same time, that's a different topic. But same time, why we have to differentiate? Why we have to show them like you know you are something else I am something else why there shall not be uniformity but tomorrow like you know somebody some Muslim girl who would be joining courses or who would be uh, joining a law or who would be joining a doctorate in a hospital she would ask like I will go in hijab what does this mean this shall not be done and if you are finished I request comment of India all the Muslim or all the Islamic followers. Shall be punished. Shall be taken under complete Sharia law. Then, at the same time, when then at then once you will start talking about this, they will run like the way they are running from Afghanistan. Then Taliban take up. Why they are running from Afghanistan? They are running from Afghanistan just because because they knows they cannot you know uh, they cannot relate themselves with that that kind of uh, law which they run. They cannot even take up that freedom, free life. You know the way of freedom we are. They were availing like somebody can wear anything. So they, they, the converted people. I would say the problem of the converted people. They, they have got uh, a way of uh, you know sympathizing from themselves and getting gain and getting kind of limelight. So this has become an Indian politics and in the national or international demography, this has become a tool for them. Okay, like you know, we have never asked like you know that uh, we have been treated or uh, or mistreated like this, right? We we also have been mistreated like this. Talk about uh, Kashmiri Hindus. I want to Kashmiri Pandit, Kashmiri Hindus. What happened to them, right? We have we made hue and cry on the international level. We are now we have now reached that level where we are making hue and cry. We are talking about the issues, but these people. Who are actually converted, they do not know even the depth of the law of Islamic rule. I wish Indian government shall apply a Sharia law on the every Muslim, or like then only they will retaliate. We are are taking you know are are, are taking up the matter uh, or the way of taking up this matter is really wrong. कोई बुराई नहीं है आपको इस्लाम पसंद है हमारे यहाँ पे हमेशा से Uh, एक प्रकार की कह दीजिए कि uh, uh, स्वच्छंदता रही है कि आप किस भगवान को पूजेंगे आप किस नियमावली को फॉलो करेंगे आप किस प्रकार के रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस मानेंगे राइट हाँ ऑफकोर्स जो राज राज uh, कह दीजिए कि uh, जो एक uh, uh, राजतंत्र होता था उसके अकॉर्डिंग जो संविधान होता था जो कि भी संविधान नहीं है संविधान में लाइक संविधान इज नॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन संविधान में एक समान विधान विच वॉज फॉर इक्वल टू एवरी वन एंड नाउ इट इज नॉट जहाँ माइनॉरिटी और मेजोरिटी के अकॉर्डिंग जहाँ पे कास्टिज्म के अकॉर्डिंग जहाँ पे इस टाइप की चीजों के अकॉर्डिंग देश में राजनीति से लेकर के प्रजातंत्र से लेकर के जॉब से लेकर के एडमिशन से लेकर सारी चीजें चल रही हूँ वहां पे संविधान तो है ही नहीं एट द सेम टाइम आई वुड से यू नो ममाई से इज दैट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डेफिनेटली शिल नॉट रिटेलिएट एंड इफ They, we shall call a kind of meeting of the scholars. These these Finnic, you know, these Finnic uh, Islamic scholars, and we shall talk to them. We shall expose them. We shall talk to them that we are very happily, uh, you know, uh, we we are happy to apply the Sharia law, but that Sharia shall not be by your choice. It shall be end to end Sharia law on you. Simple as that. Then you are not supposed to. 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 Then
if their women are like so happy for triple therapy if they are so happy with the you know kind of uh, being uh, sold you know the fake movements how they run fake movements like in south in uh, you know if you if you remember that black life matter happened in usa right this black life life matter why it is not happening happening in dubai or it's not happening in ua once you go and you know work about or like to, you know you just research about the human trafficking of african girls or siberian girls or like you know uh, about like uh, these uh, especially black girls the most of the human trafficking is happening in ua they used to keep those girls as like slaves they do everything with them they you know they use they are not provided proper uh, clothing they are not provided proper uh, you know telecommunication system so they can even contact their families there are sting operation of bbc is available on the net itself you can go and check so okay. if black life matters why this black life matter were happening in usa why it is not in ua why women rights if they are talking about just to go and check in Uh, Arabic countries, there is like you know four uh, witnesses are required to prove that a girl has been raped. From where that girl will get the rape, you know, witness. So is it not making fool? So we have to, uh, you know, start looking the picture from the broader angle. We shall not retaliate what they are doing, what they are trying to do. We shall now. Uh, I would request government of India and like people like you. to talk about this like you know we shall definitely call their religious gurus their uh, you know prophets or whosoever like you know these kind of teachers who are you know creating every now and then some issue in india we shall be calling them and then we shall say that every islamic followers shall be or shall be punished under the law of islamic rule like you know if you will do if you will be a thief your hands will be cut if you will be gazing a girl your eyes would be out if you will be doing some adultery you would would be killed right then if you are supposed to do something or like you know if you you are so finic and so happy to follow islam so islam cannot be a choice no it shall not be a choice rules or uh, regulation cannot be a choice agar aap sure. us se आप अगर उस हिसाब से भारत की जनता को चलाना चाहते हैं तो और इससे बहुत बड़ा मूवमेंट आएगा आई एम टेलिंग यू बिकॉज द पीपल हु आर गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड दे विल बी हैविंग फियर ऑफ कन्वर्जन बिकॉज नो बडी विश टू लिव देयर फ्रीडम आई वॉन्ट टू लिव फ्री यू वॉन्ट टू लिव फ्री एवरी वन एवरी वन विश टू लिव फ्री स्पेशली गर्ल्स दर्स्ट कंडीशन ऑफ फीमेल as an islamic country they are not allowed to do they they i have seen like you know what they are they going through what they go through and uh, they promote these things they are they have been taught like this for you know demeaning or uh, diminishing uh, a women's right or uh, a girl's right or uh, like you know putting girls into many different kind of Uh, like you can say slaveries or uh, prostitutions or uh, selling them in hyderabad you can still go through net and you can find out there are like you know that the sheikhs used to come to india for buying muslim women they used to buy them on the contract they used to buy them on the contract and then they used to keep them and then the kids or like then whatever happened either they used to keep uh, them or else they used to drop them back and give them some like you know some kind of uh, pocket money to take take care of them then the family is taking care again that women is sold to some new state where is the there right? is no human right violation then yeah, yeah when then where is the human right violation sure, sure. But, no you're right so you know what jia i i understand and i was kind of talking to adi about the same thing you know what happens in saudi arabia or other cultures that's not our lookout is that adi you know let's talk about india india happens to be now a secular country which means and you rightly put jia ki uh, samvidhan ka matlab hota hai samvidhan right so equal rights yeah. and equal duties for everyone yeah so this is definite this is definitely not uh, you know samvidhan ke hisab se to nahi ho raha and at the end of the day what government is really doing i think uh, ki aapne 
आपने हम लोगों पे छोड़ दिया है बिकॉज इफ देर इज नो रूल ऑफ कोर्स देन पीपल आर गोइंग टू बी रिटेलिएटिंग आउट देयर ऑन द रोड्स लाइक द वे कर्नाटका बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स डेड सो ब्रेव बट दे हैड टू कम आउट इन द स्कूल्स टू प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट दिस बोर्का थिंग एंड देन दैट्स हाउ दिस होल थिंग कॉट अप राइट तो यू नो यू आर एक्चुअली लिव इन योर योर सिटीजन्स to go decide your own fate on the roads which is which is not the way it should really work like um and for again uh, tarah tarah ke tamashe and empowerment and everything we were just talking about uh, adi uh, tell me one thing um uh, well aaj hi maine shayad dopahar mein aas paas ye pannu hai uh, seek for justice ka so uh, Uh, he comes out uh, supporting burqa girls all right and uh, then demanding for like a urdu urduistan sort of thing for this uh, uk wala pannu right khalistani hmm, for, yeah yeah so now why is khalistan supporting urduistan uh, see the pro- the problem in india is that we take every idiot seriously so pannu is a nobody in the us and the, sure. the there is a you know like uh, if you uh, like i really liked what uh, jio was speaking about uh, about the, the that islamic rule law whatever they call it we don't even dignify it by taking its name sometimes so mm-hmm. the the point is that uh, people in the us also they demand that law and if that law is demand if that law is fully implemented only on muslim within 24 hours there will be no muslim left 24 hours you know because that law is like that that's why people are running off jumping off the planes from afghanistan that's how people are happy about that law now coming to this point about the uh, the pannu speaking you know if you start taking these jokers seriously there is something seriously problem with our own intellect But that guy is living in uh, you know there is a, another supporter of his taliwal and and these groups are oh, yeah. there uh, mm-hmm. india has to it's such a large country and we have to start speaking our own narratives and we need to speak what we think about ourselves how we want to run the country now uh, al jazeera uh, a small newspaper based out of doha qatar i mean the circulation of that newspaper will be less than times now or times of india and how is that important how important is washington post how important is uh, ny times so we have to set our own standards and uh, and and these newspapers we all know americans americans know americans know they are the fake me- news media outlet in if we start taking them credibility giving them credibility then they become credible so ultimately what we have to do is create a counter narrative that this hijab issue is a anti women liberation is anti women period you know my my only logical question which i said earlier also why not men wear burqa 24 by 7 ask this question if it is equal at equality between men and women then uh, men should also wear burqa let the father show by an example to his own daughter they are not going to sure. do that so that means it's a hypocrisy mm. and it's uh, it's a it's a you know why women need to be covered why men are not covered fully aditya you would, be, you would be surprised aditya the thing is men are not supposed to wear that jali jali wala kind of banyan wear this like transy kind of thing in quran it is mentioned that you are not supposed to wear half shirts you are not supposed to wear skin tight dresses men and women both okay and you are not supposed to wear uh, something which is transy where your uh, you know ganjis or something is visible because it evokes women also towards sexual activities so if it is like this then why you are wearing why this uh, you know these khans are wearing those jali banyan and jali topis and dancing here and there why they are provoking mm-hmm. women <laughs> right yeah you know the the you know they are establishing a desert fashion style, lifestyle in in right. in india which is a green country only few parts of india are desert so why do we expect a desert lifestyle or clothing in india i mean exactly. ask an american to wear those kind of dresses and you will see an example that what happens in the us so the the point is i mean this entire controversy illogical 
an entire controversy is created by the politicians and the the problem in india is the politicians interfere with law enforcement and that is the main issue here this is a purely law and order issue a simple protest i mean it is up to the school to decide that's what the first judgment of the uh, i was reading a judgment uh, just now and the judgment said it's a, it's a matter of the school school rules and the, that is a muslim judge now again that again now they are making it conscious there is a muslim judge is a hindu judge is a muslim judge who took out that uh, order and and it's it's time for uh, freeing the police and the law enforcement and the judiciary from the narrative of a politician and uh, i was i was happy that you are reading the their textbook religious textbooks i don't read them and i, I have nothing to do with them but i can tell logic here logic and reasoning that if you want to follow a book which belongs to a certain place at a certain time and you want to convert another place according to that time and that place isn't that illogical i mean it doesn't make sense india has its own book india has bhagavad gita india has veda why not respect the law of the land so that means exactly. that the, the entire controversy is to propagate their religion they're doing it very badly and also they're making themselves the sitting ducks now everybody will know that the black garbage bag is something else you know they they will know they belong to a particular mm-hmm. category now being an american i can say whatever i want but mm-hmm. you have to take care of the local media things also yeah sure sure you know jia i so we already are kind of almost oh an hour already in the show pata nahi chala na um yeah okay so so you joined late but i'm i'm hoping you're all right first off i wanted to i would be fine to... definitely <laughs> i'll be fine definitely and uh, at the same time i would say that i i don't believe like you know some kind, somebody can harm or like even being in india also like this so i speak freely mm. this country will be ruled by the law it would not be ruled by the sharia if somebody is in love with the sharia they shall be love with completely and they, they shall be you know for they shall be following sharia completely this is my last message to the girls or to the women who are in so much of love with the sharia and the law yeah and, and why not yeah, why, why but aur batana mujhe हाँ जी अच्छा एक चीज और बतानी है रुक जाइए एक सेकेंड ये बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है वुड बी यू नो गोइंग थ्रू द पॉडकास्ट कुरान शरीफ में स्त्रियों को केवल गुप्तांग को ढकने और सीने पर कपड़ा डालकर रखने को कहा गया है कुरान शरीफ सूरा अन नूर आयत नंबर 31 जो भी ये पॉडकास्ट देखे मैं उनसे बोलना चाहूंगी कि कुरान शरीफ उठा के पढ़े उसका सूरा अन नूर आयत नंबर इकतीस पे जहाँ पे लिखा गया कि only they are allowed to cover up their breast and their private parts so which kind okay. of hijab are they talking about bikini yes <laughs> so who would say that's the description of a bikini i guess yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah but at the same time you know what my argument is ji ainadi is is not ki ye uh, ye kis religion mein kitna legit hai nahi hai my argument is in a country which is uh, which is governed by a secular um government okay uh, usme to uh, wait, religious i'm sorry say, hum refer nahi karna chahiye hum right i'm i'm stopping here uh, you now because do you really think india is now a secular country where muslim bo- uh, lord okay, board uh, uh, muslim board is there but hindu law board is not there is it a secular country is law hmm. why it is there so sure, that is not why why hindu law board is not there why uh, muslim law board is only there why uh, we are giving uh, charities to the you know these uh, their their schools or like their madrasas why why are we not giving charities to the gurukuls why we are taking charities of the temples why we are not uh, uh, you know taking charities from the masjid uh, and this like, like you know uh, uh, churches and uh, these kind of gurdwaras is it seriously a secular a secular country i don't call it secular it is secular the law which has been broken and raptured and making like a, like you know just copycat it is not a law of india it shall be uh, you know equal to everyone we have to reform our law our legislative system 
entire thing the ecosystem has to be reformed otherwise we we are, we would be nowhere this country would be taken by these traitors and they will be running it as per their own face gandhi aur ambedkar ke likhe hue banaye hue constitution ko chhed dena bahut badi baat ho jayegi ji you know shama kare shama kare क्षमा करें कि गांधी जी ने आ, नहीं लिखा था और दूसरा बात अंबेडकर जी ने भी नहीं लिखा था हरि प्रसाद राय जादा जी ने अपने हाथ से संविधान लिखा है जिसके अंदर 332 से 335 लोग थे उस संविधान समिति के अंदर हर क्षेत्र से हर जिले से और उसके अंदर राय जादा जी ने अपने हाथ से संविधान लिखा संविधान समिति के जो हेड थे वो थे मात्र अम्बेडकर जी जिसको की जान बूझ करके कास्टिज्म के लिए उसको इतना ज्यादा बढ़ा चढ़ा करके दिखाया जाता है इफ यू नो इफ इफ देर वॉज लाइक कलर सिस्टम और सवन सिस्टम बाय गांधी यू नो अम्बेडकर जी हैज बीन सेंट टू लंडन और यू नो ब्रिटेन फॉर स्टडीज बाय द मनी ऑफ सवन आपको पता होगा यदि आपने हिस्ट्री पढ़ी होगी तो उनको सहायता करने वाला व्यक्ति कौन था राइट right, तो ये जस्ट हेटरेट फैलाया गया है रॉन्ग इन्फॉर्मेशन मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन से हमारे यहाँ पे पढ़ाते नहीं है सही जो पढ़ाना चाहिए जी आई वुड लाइक टू टेक ना हो बिकॉज यू नो आई एम नॉट वेल आल्सो सो थैंक्स लॉट नहीं नहीं आपको आने के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद टॉपिक वॉज रियली रियली इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर मी बींग सो आई जस्ट के No, Thank it's, you. I'm so glad that you could make some time, Abhijit, and you take care, you know. Um, and I'll speak to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jai Aditya. Shri. Thanks, sir. Uh, Thank uh, yeah, thanks both of you. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. So, Adi, uh, like I said, you know, I was sort of worried if something has got wrong with her because uh, I couldn't really get her on the phone. Here we get. Hmm. Anyway, are we gonna wrap the show up? I just want to ask you one simple last question, Adi. Ah, uh, वो ये है कि आज you're asking for burka in the school, right? I see burka also as a symbol of something. You know, we will discuss what something is. Maybe you know what? I would rather actually have you define what that symbolism is, really. So tomorrow, then you're gonna ask for some namaz space. and this is what i'm picking up from the twitter again you know and then day after you're going to start asking for friday holidays and then uh, you know ramzan ki chutti and everything else you know and then no fee no male teachers and thing and every everything else quranic or islamic how far can you really take it uh, and how far I mean, can the state the, government let it go I mean that's what i told you the state governments are mostly corrupt in india Mo- not all of them some of them especially in the problem states now i am sure that one day the patience of hindus is going to run out and say if we lost these people if you want to follow your religion go to pakistan any other country if you want to live here respect our culture and and we have you know till the time hindus do not start preaching to muslims and asking them to leave islam and become a hindu this is not going to stop because what the game plan they see hindus learn very late very slowly so we have to also preach to them to about bhagavad gita ramayan mahabharat then only is it if each hindu takes it upon himself to preach to at least one muslim or christian in india then it becomes a level playing field if this mm-hmm. is not happening we are only giving again the, again i told you the most corrupt people are the politicians state politicians and they are the ones they need to be you know they are the ones who will say they are the ones who create division between people if you leave them alone all this protest would not happen this is protest is happening with the political backing so in india the major problem is the politicians we need to kick them out then it is going to work out absolutely no i i totally get it thank you so much for giving us time adi today i know you know we kind of exceeded that one hour window but uh, this subject was so important and i really wanted to have a podcast on this and this is not the only one which is coming out we are going to have successive um subject specific podcast on this because um ye sirf yahan pe nahi ruk raha and i had predicted it later it's not just me i mean who the f m i but i'm sure people out there are also looking out at how this is playing out on the streets right now uh 
the kind of pressure um, people are putting on on the judiciary, on government, on the state, uh, you know, enforcement. वो वो सही नहीं होना चाहिए वो सही नहीं होना चाहिए इट्स लाइक यू नो समथिंग इज इन द कोर्ट देन लेट इट बी डोंट टेक इट आउट इन द रोड्स एंड मेक इट वायलेंट सो डोंट गिव आउट अ विंडो फॉर अदर पीपल टू कम एंड एंड यू नो मेक इट लाइक लाइक अ वायलेंट सिचुएशन और अ सिविल वॉर समथिंग दैट्स वॉट बिकॉज देन यू गोना क्राई आउट फासिज्म योर सेल्फ then you're going to pull out your victim card and uh, hey we have been oppressed why to take this point all the way yeah? why, why to why to take this all this way to this uh, situation anyway thank you so much adi uh, apna thank um, you apna apna wrap up karte hain abhi and uh, i will get yes. in touch with you again all right okay thank you hmm? jai shri ram <laughs>